everyone, my name is Maria and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's episode, I will be teaching you how to lift colors. Lifting colors is another technique used in watercolors, just like wet on wet or wet on dry. And you do want to master it. So I will be sharing with you some tips on how to do it correctly. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome again to this episode. So what's the big deal about lifting colors, right? Well, it's like wet on wet or wet on dry. It's just another technique in watercolors. This technique, I find it to be essential just like wet on wet. And to be honest, when I first started painting with watercolors, I didn't really understand it completely. A lot of times, like I would lift the colors, but I didn't really know how I was doing it and like how to lift them correctly. And then it's just with time, I started getting it. I was watching like how the paint flows and how it dries. And then I realized it's all about timing. I'll give you examples like this parrot is not finished, but I did lift the colors here. So you can see that a little bit here. This cat is another great example. Why? Because I created like whiskers just by lifting the colors. So there's more lifting over here, and then you have lifting on this side, and overall, I lifted whatever I could. Of course, this has to do with timing. If you miss that timing, then there's no lifting. Here's another finished parrot, uh, and this is where I lifted the colors. So I lifted the colors for the feathers, and as you can see, what you can do is create an image of a parrot and give that impression of feathers. Like you see, like I didn't paint every single feather here. I didn't paint even one of them, maybe here. I did paint the feathers. But in this general area of the parrot, I did not define like singled out feathers. That's why it's useful to know how to lift the colors because here I was able to show that there's some feathers in there. And here's another example this little bird. So I lifted the colors here, and then I lifted colors over here, and then I lifted colors in the background. And then for the leaf over here, a little bit here, I lifted as well. Those are all the areas where I lifted the colors. You can decide uh, where you want to lift and how you want to lift the colors. What lifting does, it helps to add that softness to your painting, that organic look of a watercolor. Uh, painting instead of using really masking fluid I didn't use masking fluid here that worked perfectly because I wanted those hard edges but sometimes you just don't want the hard edges so let's get to it and the first thing I'm going to do is designate an area and wet it so we're going to do this wet on wet and then we'll do this wet on dry so I just designated an area for lifting I am using this flat three quarter size brush. It's actually my own line, Golden 2. I'm going to fill this square with water. So we're going to fill this square with water. And go ahead, do this with me. So we can get through this together. And I'll be guiding through how to lift the colors. But first thing is to wet the paper. We don't need to like overly wet it because we're not uh, really painting anything. We're just gonna add color and wait for it to dry and then we're going to lift the colors so just fill it you don't need puddles of water if you want to have the most control because you can add colors however you wish you could go with like a uh, half and half like ratio or heavy cream like ratio but for the most control you want to actually go with like heavy cream like ratio if you go with milk like ratio then the paint will spread way too much but I do have a video about the ratios and how I call these ratios. So water-like ratio, milk-like ratio, half and half-like ratio, and heavy cream. I'm going to mix some color. Let's say I'm going to grab cobalt blue and bright rose. These two colors are actually nice for lifting. So that's another thing. Like You want to grab actually colors that do lift. And I'm filling this square with the two colors. I'm mixing those colors mostly on the paper. This is the cobalt blue and bright rose by Holbein. So I'm mixing colors on the paper as I go. These are actually the colors I would use to paint iris flowers loose, especially like when I was painting them loose. I do have a video, by the way, as well. So there's my uh, violet, shade of violet, like a blue violet and then pink violet, I suppose. Or I should call it correctly, like a uh, red violet. So there you go, that's my square. I'm gonna clean this brush and now 
It's just a matter of waiting for this to dry a little bit. If you overly wetted the area and you started with like puddles of water on top of the paper, what's gonna happen is like the paint will flow and basically it's just like you have a puddle in the middle and then the paper, the paint will start kind of flowing and trying to hug the sides and it won't be drying evenly. So it's best to not have that puddle of water uh, on top of the paper. This way you have the most control and the layer will dry evenly. So you can see like this is evenly uh, drying. I don't have like puddles of water, right? So I'm gonna put it back so you guys can see it well because I'm going to start lifting very soon. So that timing, when is that timing? It's right before things are really dry. So at first, everything is shiny so you can still see it's shiny right actually you could now start lifting the colors oh this is actually starting to be that good timing so it's a little shiny it's that moment right before the paper like that shine completely goes away i'm going to grab a round brush eight this is also my own line so round brush eight the golden one and now this is when you can start testing if you can lift. I can start lifting colors. The key is to have a cl clean brush. You want to have a clean brush and you also want to wipe your brush first on a towel. So it's a damp brush. So it's just a damp brush. If you have too much water, you will create a bloom because technically you're actually creating blooms like this. So technically these are blooms. Uh, you're just controlling these blooms. So here I can just create lines. And you can go back towards these areas that you just lifted. And what's going to happen is you will just deepen those lines. So whatever you're painting, you just deepen that line. Like, I don't know if you're painting something on a tree branch or something else. I'm going to show you uh, what's going to happen if I have too much water. So watch this. I have, I didn't, I didn't wipe my brush basically on a towel. So I have this drip of water. I want to grab it again so you guys can see it well. I didn't wipe my brush on a towel. Here it goes. I'm going to create a bloom because I did not wipe my brush on a towel. But now I am wiping my brush on a towel and I'm going to lift again right here. So I have the control to lift the colors. You can lift with a different brushes like um, smaller brushes for example. You can lift with a round zero or this is a round four sorry this is round four so you can lift here this side of the paper has been drying like very fast actually uh, more than this side so here I can still lift and I can go back towards the areas and I can press a little harder with the brush to create like straighter lines and of course it's also a matter of how hard you're pressing onto the paper but now you can see this giant bloom in the middle. That's because I didn't wipe my brush on a towel. Here's another example of creating a bloom. I have this small brush. I slightly only uh, wiped it on a towel. Well, that's still not enough. I, I am still going to create a bloom. And now I'm wiping this same brush on a towel very well. And then I'm trying to lift. And I'm still able to lift. It's not as perfect or as easy, I guess, as it would be on this side. So I am moving to this side so I can show you the lifting um, that I'm not actually creating any blooms. So that's it. So it's all about the timing. Again, it's right before the paper is completely dry. You're watching the paper drying. So at first, you see that shine over the paper, right? You see that shine over the paper. And then that shine slowly starts to go away. And then it's like right before that shine is completely gone, or even when the shine is already gone, that's the timing. So let's do this now, wet on dry. With wet on dry, the paper will dry faster, way faster. So we'll actually have to start lifting uh, pretty much right away. Okay, so this is wet on dry. So what I need to do is grab some paint. So this is my Bright Rose uh, Cobalt Blue. So the same colors. This is milk-like ratio. Milk-like ratio. So the ratio changes because now I'm gonna paint it wet on dry. So I don't need thick amount of paint. So there's my wet on dry. 
we go. This is more like between water and milk-like ratio. Maybe more like a milk-like ratio, not to confuse you too much. And I grabbed a little bit of good red as well. Now the paper dries faster because I did not pre-wet this paper. So it's drying really fast. So if I want to go back to some areas, I have to do this fast. There you go. I'm going to rinse this brush in water. And now I'm going to uh, start watching it, I guess. I could start lifting already. This is my round eight golden one. This side seems drier. Um, I can lift, but I actually have to wait a little longer. Like this area is better to, to lift now because what's happening is that the paper dries unevenly, especially that we painted it, or I painted this section wet on dry. So like some areas are perfect to, to lift now, like this one here, I can lift. Like this one on the bottom is good to lift. Um, this section is good to lift too, because that shine is almost gone. Here I can lift. This is still kind of wet-ish, too wet a little bit. But you can still try it. It's like nothing's really, I mean, this is the thing. You can start lifting lifting earlier. What's going to happen is uh, you might just add a little more water to your painting. But as long as you're not bringing like too much water, you're wiping your brush on a towel, you will not create a bloom. So now I'm lifting. And I do start lifting earlier uh, a lot of times because... I have a large area, for example, to cover, to, to lift. Like I'm painting a, a large animal on 14 by 19 inches, right? So of course I need to start lifting earlier. Oh, otherwise I will not make it like to lift, let's say the, the, the chest of the cat. <laughs> so I will maybe lift like the face, but what about the back or something else? So sometimes I do start earlier. So you can go fast when you lift too, and again, you can go back towards the areas too to make these lines deeper if you want to. You can lift with other brushes as well. This is just the example of lifting colors. If you want to have finer lines, smaller, you can use a round eight for, uh, round zero, I'm sorry, this is a round zero. The other one was round eight. So you can have like smaller areas lifted. I do go sometimes like twice over the same area. But here you can see like the lines can be really small. There you go. The lines can be very small if you use a smaller brush. So it's just lifting, lifting, lifting. And again, if you wanna create a bloom, just don't wipe your brush on a towel. So that's the key. Number one, wait for that perfect timing. So right before the paper is like completely dry, that's for sure. But like once that shine goes away from the paper. And number two, wipe your brush on a towel before you begin lifting the colors. Thank you so much guys. And please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and share the video to help the algorithm going. Thanks guys. And let me know if you have any questions.